What's up guys? We are here today at TK MMA Fit in Dubai. We're going to be doing an upper body session because I can't do too much focus on one muscle group because obviously there's only a certain few exercises I can do, so I'm very limited. So since the injury, I've been doing like a leg workout and then an upper body workout. So I'll be doing a bit of delt, a bit of back, a, a tiny little bit of chest, obviously some arms too and whatnot. And I hope you guys enjoy the video. I've actually never trained at this gym before, so it's new to me, the equipment here and what I'm going to do. So we're just going to pick what I can see and make a good workout of it for you guys. So I've got one dumbbell here. I'm going to just start with some side raises to get my shoulder nice and warm. Uh, again, trying to keep it as good in terms of form as I can as possible. Again, for this first exercise, just a side lateral raise, I'm gonna do like four to five sets, gonna be 12 to 15 reps every set. Again, not too heavy, just getting in some nice blood flow in my side delt. As you can see, we're actually on a rooftop. So we get some beautiful sights here. Look, it's amazing. Beautiful views. I'm glad that I haven't picked a, a day that's too hot because here in Dubai it gets 40 plus today, it's like 30, 32. And as you can see, the sun's not too bright, so I'm not gonna be drenched in sweat like I thought I was going to be, maybe just a little bit. <laughs> so now we're gonna move on to a kettlebell raise. Again, it's not something I would normally do. Uh, it's just because we're here on a rooftop and they've got some good kettlebells here. So we're just gonna do a Kettlebell swing through the legs, drive the hips forward, come up and get a good shoulder pump. Apart from the kettlebells all the way down here. <laughs> I'm not actually going to increase the weight on that because I probably picked one that was a bit too heavy. So <laughs> I'm going to stay with that. It's 20 kilograms. Just going to do two to three sets as many as I can until I feel like I'm going to die. So I'm going to try this hammer strength side raise. I do actually like it, but I don't like it when you hold your forearm like this. I normally just sit in there with straight arms. So we're going to give it a try. I'm not sure I'm going to fit though. Uh, maybe not. I don't. <laughs> no, okay, cancel that one. <laughs> I'm hunting for something else that's going to work. We'll do a few back exercises now, and then we'll finish off with a pec deck because the pec deck's indoors. It's not outside here, so we'll finish up in here and then we'll finish the workout inside. So we'll do a few pull downs, a few rows to get the blood into my lat, my upper back, rhomboids, you know. I'm trying to stay huge, but I'm really not anymore because I've already lost 30 pounds. So, oh look, it's already weight on the machine. This is a struggle actually, because again, my arm's in the way, but if I keep it light enough, I can just jam my legs under and lean back. <sighs> we will attempt to put some more weight on the machine. When the, the holders are very high, <laughs> you've got to do like a discus to get it up. <laughs> so, it's just 30 kg on there now, the last set was 20. Woo! Like, wait. <laughs> Actually, it is. <laughs> Let's put another 10 on. I'm feeling adventurous. <laughs> oh! Ah! Okay, I made it. Obviously, I'm doing my best to document the whole process, you know. Again, some people are like, oh my God, he keeps talking about his pectare, which is, I, I, I do kind of feel a little bit. 
is very true, but there's thousands of people that want to see the document, me document it. They want to see the recovery. They want to see how fast I can get back, see how well I can get back, see what my physique looks like afterwards, you know? So I'm trying to do my best that I can in terms of what I found out from my specialists to science, to everything to make this heal one as quick as possible, two as well as possible, and to look as well as possible. I don't, I'm not pushing myself too hard. I'm not lifting crazy heavy weights. I'm literally just getting the blood flowing around. You know, a lot of people seem to think that my left arm, the left side of my body is going to be massive and I'm going to be a little raisin on this side, but I don't agree. I mean, obviously right now, yes, it's bigger, but it's because this arm has been stuck in the sling for four weeks now, you know, like it's got no glycogen in it. There's no pump. The muscle's obviously wasting away, even though I hate to say that, but it's true. So yes, it's going to look a little bit different now, but I don't, I'm not training hard enough to grow this side of my body. It's just maintenance. So yes, when I come back, this is going to be behind, but then I'm going to concentrate on this side for a bit to catch up with this. So I don't think I'm going to encounter any huge imbalances from this. I'm just doing the best I can to get back to 100% as soon as I can. Obviously, another point of this injury that I've, I've spoken about a lot uh, on my social media and directly to people that have contacted me and even to my family and everyone that surrounded me, you know, that I see every day um, is, is a mental, you know, my, my mental state since I've been a kid has never been perfect. I'm very unstable and I'm, I'm honest to say that. And when this first happened, like I started crying and I really broke down and I really thought I was extremely devastated and I thought that my life was over, right? But obviously we've managed to come out of the hole a little bit. I'm trying to be as positive as I can. Again, with just my day-to-day -day life, not sitting in the, the hotel, doing nothing. I'm trying to get out, maybe go to the mall, walk around, go see how beautiful it is here, you know, spend time with my girlfriend. Um, and just trying to do the best I can. But me being in the gym is something I've done since I was 15 and I have to do it, you know, like I have to do something. So everything I'm doing is one, to help me recover and two, to keep me mentally okay. Because if I'm just sitting down and doing nothing, I'm gonna go crazy. And if I'm honest, I'm gonna be deep, deep, deep into depression. So just trying to, trying to keep my head on as well as I can and do the best I can. And I know, for a lot of people, mental health is, is a really bad, life-changing thing. And it definitely has affected me a lot. I've been through a lot of things in my life that I haven't shared and I probably won't share with everyone, but the people that are close to me know. I do try to address this and talk about this a lot on social media because when I was younger, I was very put down and upset with the fact that the people I looked up to, it never looked like anything ever went wrong in their life, you know? All you ever see is positivity and it looks like they never had anything wrong. And I always sat there and thought, why is, why is everything going wrong for me? And these guys, everything's perfect, but it's not. They just don't show it on social media, you know? It's, it's fake. So this, when I first started, like trying to put myself onto social media, it was always me being real, you know? If I'm having a great day, you'll see that. If, you, if, you see, if I'm having a bad day and I'm crying about something, you're gonna see it. And the guys that have followed me for over a year now would have seen me cry on my story a few times because it's just me, you know, I want to be honest and I'm very directed to the younger audience that was me when I was younger and I was looking up to people. And I want to be able to bring across that positivity, but also to show them that it's not been a great life for me so far and things have gone wrong and things are going to go wrong in your life. And you just need to be able to get out of that hole and try and do your best to keep positive. So that's what I'm doing right now. And that's what I've tried to do for most of my life. And if you guys need any help with any of that, I will do my best to help you too. Hammer strength isolateral row. This is honestly one of my favorite back exercises. I've been doing it for years. And there's two different ways to do it, you know? Obviously it has a seat and it's, it's very much like this. I think this is very incorrect. I don't think you should be sat like this at all. And for your biomechanics of, of how you're training your lats and your back, it's not, it's not correct. So, Either you sit on the seat, and let me just adjust the seat up. There's a bit of a struggle with one hand, but. Either you sit on the seat, oh, it's a bit broken, I think. And you come forward and you put the other hand on the seat. So you're staying upright, you know, like this. I'm sorry, I cannot show that to you right now, but <laughs> I'm hoping you can understand. So this hand would be on there and you'd be rowing like this. 
but my favorite way to do it is to grab the bar. I put the same foot on the base like this. I come up, I would normally put my other hand on there, but obviously I can't. But I'm gonna come here, chest up, a little arc in my spine, and I'm gonna drive this back. But what I'm actually thinking is driving my elbow down. I'm trying to drive my elbow into my leg. I'm not trying to pull it back. I wanna drive down and contract my lat, you know, towards my hip. You also want to keep your shoulder depressed. A lot of people do this. You want to keep the shoulder down and pull down. Again, keeping the tempo the same, stretch forward, protract your shoulder and pull, keeping it slow. Again, 12 to 15 reps on this is great. There's times where I've definitely loaded it up with more weight and I, I, I go at least eight reps, eight reps on here minimum. But again, if you, if you want to put some more load on, keep it eight reps. But obviously I'm keeping it lighter, so I'm going to go for 12 to 15. I'm actually putting another 20 on here because this machine is not really that heavy. I used to put like 120 kilos on the side or something like that. But yeah, I just want to put a across a point on this exercise that, again, you want to keep the positive very slow and controlled. But I feel like when you keep the negative even slower, you can literally feel your, your lats like tearing the muscle apart. I don't really like to use that word now because obviously what happened, but you can kind of feel your lat tearing forward and you know that's going to bring some growth on the back. So again, chest up, driving down nice and slow. Keeping the shoulder down, keeping it nice and slow. It's a really good back exercise and I've always loved it. I also definitely noticed not being able to have my other hand to stabilize myself on the, on the pad, it's definitely making it harder. I've got everything against me at the moment. One arm, everything is hard. <laughs> Keeping positive though. Um, obviously, I just also want to say, I, I had a dream since I was 15. It was kind of like forced upon me actually. I never started bodybuilding as I wanted to be a bodybuilder. I just, my, my sister had, a boyfriend who was very muscular and I looked at him and I was like wow this guy looks great you know because when I was younger I was fat and I got bullied a lot for that so I always looked at him and I was like damn this guy is the man you know so that was one thing that started a little train in my head of thoughts of I want to look like this right so and then I, when I was at school I was 15 a, a few a me me and a few of my friends there was a, were going to the school gym and they wouldn't actually let me use the weights until I was 16. But I, kept, I snuck in there a few times and they'd come out and be like, Ryan, sorry, you're not allowed to use it. But I kept sneaking in. Anyway, came to a point where they're like, damn, this kid's quite serious. So I got my parents to write a letter to say that, you know, if anything happens to him, it's our fault, it's not yours. So again, it was okay. And then um, I was in there training for 15, 16, whatnot. And then at the time, I was studying with Nissan. I was uh, doing an apprenticeship as a mechanic and next door to the garage, there was a bodybuilding gym. And at this time I'd been training for maybe a year or less. And I'd been dieting myself. And I'd lost a lot of weight and I was really, really skinny, but I didn't really know what I was doing. You know, I was just training every day and doing the best I could. But so anyway, I went into the gym. I was like, hey, I, I've been training and whatnot and dieting and I'm just getting skinny, I want to build muscle. And the guy said, wow, you're really young, this is cool. I actually run a bodybuilding show. If you want to train in my gym, I'll train you every day and I'll do your diet if you do my bodybuilding show. And I was like, what the hell is bodybuilding? But yeah, okay, it's free, you know, I didn't have much money and that was, that was, that was the plan. I was like, yeah, okay. So I literally went in there every day, I trained with him. He helped me pose and then maybe six to eight months later, I was doing this bodybuilding show that I had no clue about, nothing. I, I don't even think at this point I was following many bodybuilders on Instagram. So again, for a few, a few weeks before the show, I was like crying every day. I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna get naked in front of people, basically. That was, it was a nightmare. And again, even when I was backstage at the show, I was crying, I was like, no, I can't do it. I just remember him pushing me out onto the stage and I was like, uh, 
and that was it, you know. But he taught me how to pose, and I was very good at posing. But I just remember how hard that diet was. It was like, I did zero carbs for like 10 weeks. And I didn't have much muscle and whatnot. I was lean, but obviously not like, I think we pro lean, but for a 16 year old kid, I, I look good. And you know, it's nice to have those photos and I'm really proud of that. Anyway, the point of all this story is, I just want to say that since then I was 68 kilos on stage and last year I was 140. So I doubled my body weight and I was much leaner this year. I put on 70 kilos of muscle. I went from being this skinny kid to quite a large bodybuilder. You know, obviously I have body dysmorphia, so I don't actually think I'm that big, but it comes across from everyone. That's the truth, right? But I just want to say that don't give up on your dreams. You know, whatever you have your mind set to, you can do it. You just have to focus and go at it. Consistency is the biggest thing. You have to every day, you have to wake up with that burning desire to just keep going forward and keep doing the little things. You know, those monot monotonous things that you're like, oh, I don't want to do this, don't want to do this every day. But it's those little things. You've got to tick those boxes. And as the, the months, the years go by, you're going to get there. I promise you, you absolutely will. I didn't believe it myself, but now I'm starting to believe it. And I'm in a place where I'm like, wow, I never really thought I would be. But I just never stopped. I just, I just kept, kept going. And I was that person that was banging on people's doors. And I was like, damn, this guy's going to get annoyed at me. But I was just there. I kept hammering, kept hammering. And now I have a, a great network of friends that are at the top of the industry. And I'm very grateful and blessed to be in the place I am right now. So never give up. Keep going. Consistency is the key. Both of you? Yeah. Are you going to make me look small in the middle? <laughs> You're welcome. You're Thank, you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Do you always train here? Yeah. Yeah, I've never been before. It's really nice, isn't it? Yeah. On a rooftop. It's very yeah. hot though. It is. It's a nice vibe. <laughs> How old are you guys? Uh, 16. Yeah, yeah. I was. I literally was just talking about that when I, I first started training. When I was 15, 16. I did my first show when I was 16 too. So keep at it. Short, 16. Yeah, I man. Yeah. Than us, <laughs> no, no, I wasn't. I wasn't. How much do you weigh? Uh, 74. Yeah, I was like 70 kilos, 68 kilos on stage. I'll show you some photos when I get my phone, but yeah, I, was, I wasn't that great, but... Come a long way, bro. Thank you so much, thank you. What, are you training? Yeah, uh, chest. Oh, nice. Chest, uh, I'm staying away from chest for a while, yeah. so... <laughs> but I hope you have a good session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have thank you. Thank you, man. This is really one of my favorite tricep exercises. I think when you're training your arms, everything should be unilateral because flexibility becomes into it a lot. So I have bad flexibility therefore I cannot really lengthen and shorten my tricep if I'm doing a, a two-handed rope so again I love to do everything single-handedly obviously right now I can only do that one arm so kind of goes with it kind of have like this isn't an exercise that a lot of people do but it's kind of I just kind of use that the handle when I twist it a little bit and I come down and turn it out just trying to match the rope push down which is with both hands just with one you know so that's an exercise, that, exercise I like to do. I'm gonna do three to four sets on here, a minimum of 12 reps, but probably around 15 every set. Again, increasing the weight on every set. Again, here is a, another single arm tricep exercise I like to do. Um, well, that doesn't cause me any pain with my pec. So again, just come across, kind of nice and controlled. Squeeze the tricep. I'm gonna do a single arm, single arm pull down on here. Again, I got my helper to take the equipment off because I can't. Again, this is this is a very good lat exercise. Um, I actually do this normally, um, but it's again gonna work in with the, the one hand thing. So again, lock in, and I'm just gonna stretch up. I'm gonna go underhand like so. I'm gonna lean my core back a little bit, come down and squeeze. I wanna stretch. I want to, I'm not pulling back, I'm pulling down. Pulling down, you know? A lot of people seem to pull back. Pull down. Just make it a little bit heavier. Always increase the weight. Always, every set. Unless, obviously, you're failing. Then maybe use some other techniques, a super set, a drop set, or something. You want to use these set intensifiers so you can get the most out of your workout. You want to work hard, you don't want to quit, all right? So either increase the weight or increase the intensity somehow to get huge.
<laughs> Maybe I'll try. Again, like I said, just a bit of an upper body mix up workout. So I'm gonna do, I felt okay. You know, I don't really like doing it at the moment, but it was good. So I'm gonna do three to four sets on here, increasing the weight every time. Uh, just be a bit careful not to increase it too much. Also, again, whatever you guys wanna see, please comment, please contact me or something. Tell me something you personally would like to see. I'm pretty sure I'll make it for you. Um, I'm not the best with the ideas. Uh, obviously right now I'm very restricted, but I've seen a lot of comments. People just wanna see my day-to-day -day life, uh, some things that I can do here in Dubai. So if you've got any ideas, maybe it might be wacky or you might think you feel a bit stupid saying it, but don't, put it across and it might get done if it's cool, but I'm pretty sure it will be. Whew. I'm not going any other. That was scaring me too much. <laughs> I think that's the first time I used my pec in four weeks. I think, apart from I did a few sets of pec deck before. But that feels very stressful. <laughs> I'm gonna make this set lighter. <laughs> I'm getting scared. Tip curl on the cable now. Again, this is a normal bicep exercise I would do. Like I said before, I really like to do single arm exercises for arms. So I do like a step back so I'm under full stretch. I try and keep my elbow as still as possible and I just curl up. This is one of my favorite back exercises. Again, I like the single-handed component. I can really get my arm back and shorten the lat. Get a nice squeeze, a nice pinch. Stretch and squeeze. You want to, again, keep your shoulder down, protract, pull down. When you come back, pull down, like try and scrape your leg. You don't want to pull up, you want to pull down. Oh, yeah. Just wanted to talk to you about my, my day, my daily post-workout meal. It's always chicken and rice. There's actually brown rice here today, but I normally go for white rice, jasmine rice, because it digests very well with me, uh, again with chicken. Both very low fat, therefore not slowing down digestion. It's good fast protein, good bioavailability, fast carbs too. Uh, throughout my workout, I'm always drinking amino acids. Uh, essential amino acids and I also have a carb powder in here normally cyclodextrin or glucose uh, that I add to the drink with, along with electrolytes however if I don't have a carb powder I always go to drink a Gatorade or a Lucozade or something like that always if you've seen over the years I'm always drinking carbs into workout again with amino acids um, obviously when I'm prepping and I come closer to the show I cut out the carbs a bit so you'll see them drop out but when I'm trying to gain muscle and most of the year, I'll definitely be drinking amino acids and carbohydrates into a workout. Uh, just one of my top tips to help you get huge. That is it for today's workout. As you can see, it was very much uh, random. But again, I said that before, like it was gonna be a full upper body workout with exercises that I can do and that aren't gonna cause me any pain, any stress. So I kind of looked in the gym, I used machines that were gonna fit my needs for today. So I managed to get a bit of blood in the chest, in my tricep, in my bicep, and in my lats, in my back. Um, it was good, it was good. As you can see, I've got a sweat on, I've got some blood flowing. And I really enjoyed it, you know, like it's a beautiful place. It's cool, great gym. If you're here, you should check it out. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please like, comment, subscribe. Again, like I said, just follow me forever because you'll be excited when you see me back to full life with both arms and the journey back to the stage will all be documented. And I really want you guys to be able to see it after watching this. So again, thank you so much. Keep watching.